One of the reasons that I started Live It Up is so that I could tell stories about people that uh, need a little help in life. And with us now is a wonderful gentleman by the name of James Vasquez, and we're going to be talking to him about his business and his family. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Donna. So glad that you're here. One of the things that I learned about you is that you have two locations, Minuteman Press locations. So tell us about your business. That's correct, Donna. I own a Minuteman Press printing and marketing franchise, and I have two locations. My primary location is in Bohemia, and my second location is Patchog. Now, why did you decide to get into the printing business? Well, throughout my whole career, I've been involved in the marketing and advertising aspect of, of creativity. So when I came across the Minuteman Press printing franchise, I found that it was an opportunity that I could come closer to home. I used to work in Manhattan, spent a lot of time commuting to the city, and family, as you know, is important to me. So that prompted me to go out on my own and start my own company. I was able to do that through Minuteman Press. Now, you're married to a nurse. I am. And you have a family. Absolutely. And what is the challenge right now that your family is going through? Well, coincidentally, Donna, my wife is a nurse, and I guess I've been blessed with that because we have three boys. My oldest is 11, my middle son is 8, and the youngest just turned 6. At the same time, I actually started my first location for my Minuteman Press business. Uh, we were pregnant with Brendan. So imagine a new business owner, never been in business before, starting a new business and being pregnant with our third child, which we knew. Our other two sons are beautiful and healthy, and we were faced with this challenge knowing when we got pregnant uh, six months in that our son had some complications. And how, did you, how was that diagnosed for you? Through an ultrasound? It was diagnosed through an ultrasound, and through the... Uh, results what they showed us they were really were unsure as to what he had we had a lot of diagnoses that were misdiagnosed and it wasn't until actually he was born that we actually had some hope by going all the way out to the children's hospital in philadelphia where we had a surgeon who came to the location at the time dr campbell who had diagnosed him properly his actual diagnosis is considered it, thoracic insufficiency syndrome in layman's terms, he has a severe scoliosis and he has a club foot. Okay. And that, that's been complicated through, through his, his development. And that's where it began. That's where everything began. And the prognosis long term is quite positive. However, he has to go for regular surgeries every six months. And when my wife and I had initially thought the plan to go through with this, we thought that it would be something that we could handle. Uh, considering my, my wife is a nurse, uh, we thought it would get easier as time went on, and it just has not. Uh, thank God he's had successive surgeries that were positive. He just turned six. He's already had 36 surgeries. 36 surgeries, and he's six years old. He's only six years old. He's had 36 surgeries. And what type of surgeries are they doing for him? What is, what is the goal? What is the hope of these surgeries? Donna, when he was born, he had scoliosis, severe case, 48 degree of curvature of the spine, bilaterally. He was basically in the form of an S, if you will. Okay. So the prognosis and the, the procedure that would correct this is known as a VEPTR, V-E-P-T-R device. And that stands for an acronym, Vertical Expansion Prosthetic uh, Titanium Rod. Okay. And what that does is that's inserted, implanted into his spine. And then what they do, every six months, they have to go in to expand the device to simulate the growth of the spine. And that's the plan until he's about 16 years old. The reason why he's had so many surgeries is, unfortunately, he's had a couple of complications. Most recently, which I shared with you, was he had five surgeries this past summer, and that was because he had infection. And that's, unfortunately... The unfortunate result of some surgeries that can happen and we've unfortunately experienced that. There's a lot of other complications with surgeries too. Adhesions, blood loss, all types of different things, infections, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And, and so you, you talk to him though, like what's his attitude towards this? If he were here right now, Donna, he knows nothing else other than joy and happiness. He loves Legos, Mixels, runs around with his other two brothers. He just has so much spunk. He's fun. He loves school. He loves playing. He's an, the, the normal six-year-old boy. He has so much energy. And that's what keeps my wife and I and our family going, knowing that he knows nothing else. And then when it's time to go in for surgery, he's such a smart boy and he understands. 
we just talk to him as if he were an adult. He knows what he's going through, doesn't understand the severity of it. But at the same time, he understands when it's time to go to Philadelphia, what's expected. He typically asks us questions such as, how long is it going to be, Mommy? How long, Daddy? So we kind of give him a, an idea as to how many days it might be and what's involved. We just make it a point to educate him so he knows what he's going through. And if anybody at school, maybe a child, asks what's wrong with your foot or your back, mm -hmm. we tell them. You know, we, we explain to him that he, he was born this way, but he's fine. Absolutely. And that you can't judge a book by the cover, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter that his body's a different shape. or but, but I see what your family goes through when there's somebody that's not uh, well in your family. It, it, it's a whole stressful situation. You've got your other two that you're also, you know, trying to take care of. They're missing you when you're away. You've got... Uh, medical bills that are insurmountable sometimes it's yeah. it's it's a it's a heavy road for you it's it's a huge thing you know so how do you find strength and the support is it by being vocal is it by letting people know what you're going through so other people want to be there to help you Donna for the longest time my wife and I thought that this is just our life was what we were accustomed to with the situation that happened and we went through it for years without talking to anybody. Uh, my wife's very proud. She's, you know, she doesn't want to call him disabled or anything. We don't think he is. No. But at the same time, we realized that only recently have we realized that we do need to connect with others and we need to share our message because there might be other people going through this that aren't as strong as my wife and I, that don't have the strong support network. I've been blessed with a great family. They all help out. My brother's fantastic and his family and his wife. My parents are amazing. So we really work together to live through this. There are times, Donna, I'm not going to lie, that we question a lot of things. We went through a lot of questioning. And then we just started to realize, you know what, he's going to be really special. when he, He's going to make a difference in this world. And that keeps us going through. Your whole family is. You know, I mean, you, you really are. I, I think by having the courage and the, and the bravery to speak up, to not be isolated, to not keep this a private situation, allows you to be a role model for other families. Because there's so many people out there, James, as we've been talking about, right. that are going through pain, that are going through, they're sitting in hospitals by themselves at night. Mm -hmm. You know, they're wondering, well, do we want to go on with this next surgery? And, and how, how are we going to handle this situation? Um, but I applaud you for that. And the other day, there was a, a huge, wonderful event because the networking community stepped up yes. and you guys had a comedy show <laughs> as a fundraiser, <laughs> right, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you get through it sometimes with the laughter. Get through it, absolutely. And it's just, it was a, a positive event. It went really well. And again, that, that also emphasized how much we do need to share this with people, only because, like I said, maybe others aren't as strong as we are to go through it. And if we can help just one other family get through something like this, we feel like we've done a good job. Well, I wish you all the best of luck to you, your wife, your three sons. I thank you for being so open and honest. And like I said, I, I wanted to have you on because I want to help promote your business because I feel like if you do better in business, right, and you're thriving yeah. and you're helping your clients thrive, that somehow, some way, it's going to help your son. So thank you so much for coming thank here. Thank you, Don. I really appreciate you're it. You're welcome. And the next time you have a, an event, please invite me. Absolutely. I'll of be course. there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Maybe I'll even do stand-up. Uh, stay tuned for more on Live It Up. If you have a situation that you're going through in your family, reach out to us at liveituptvshow at gmail.com. That's my personal email address, and if we can make a difference, we'd love to. Thanks for watching.